Welcome to the show, I'm Kathy Ireland. It would seem that designing and producing a product might be the hardest part of launching a manufacturing business, but how those goods are packaged and handled can have a major impact on overall efficiency as well as a company's bottom line. Joining us today are Greg Goff, Century's Vice President of Sales, and Les Womack, Vice President of Engineering, to give us an inside look at the future of integrated packaging equipment and conveyor systems. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. Now, Les, Century goes back more than 40 years. How did it all get started? Well, August of 1980 was when we got our start. It was an installation company. The roots of uh, customized conveyor systems began in Lynchburg, Virginia, somewhere around the late 60s. And that concept kind of blossomed in the 70s and 80s. And there became a need for the installers to get involved in the business because they needed to be the experts to make it work. And our uh, founder was the one that had the vision of starting Century with just a handful of people. He had the need one day to make a part he built a part that led to another part that led to a building, then a bigger building. And 41 years later, we're in a 250,000 square foot building with 250 people. Wow, congratulations. And Greg, how is Century carrying through that vision today? Century is a, a family atmosphere. We believe in, in family values and each employee it is a personal part of Century because we're an ESOP, we're an employee-owned company. And because of that, you know, we feel that not only the employee, but their family is part of our family. So over the years, you know, we've, we've grown our family, really. And uh, we, we really think of them as, as part of us and, you know, they're just not employees in today's world. And I mean, Les, your company's had an incredible amount of growth. How do you believe this vision has shaped Century's current product offerings? Well, I'm gonna speak to you from an engineering point of view, okay? It might be a little different than a sales point of view, but um, it's been a delicate balance. We do have a large product line. We're constantly expanding that product line, and but we are committed to doing that in measured steps. Um, we've got to balance the notion of being a one-stop shop or expanded too rapidly without compromising the quality that we're known for. And Les, one of the company's latest developments is the use of robotics. Could you tell us a bit about how this inclusion is in turn benefiting your customers? Sure. We were first introduced to robotics a little over 10 years ago um, through an affiliate company. Um, it had been around the industry for a little bit, but we were introduced to it then. and. Uh, at the time, I specifically wasn't sure if it was going to be a phase that the industry was going through or, you know, a flavor of the day kind of thing, but, or if it was going to be a change of course for the industry. Um, but what we've learned over the last 10 years is that robotics actually brings a very compact footprint, a very versatile footprint to applications that didn't previously exist in the industry. And so what we've done is taken it a step further, we've taken it to heart and we're integrating that technology with our existing product line to position as well for other markets. Les, are these one size fits all solutions or are there options for customization? Well, every project's a little different. Um, a one size fits all notion doesn't really give our customers their best opportunity to be successful. Um, products these days, the, the speeds are increasing constantly. The plant efficiencies are unwavering. They want, you know, 100% efficient. They don't want to waste any money. Um, so you almost have to tailor a production line for every product. What separates Century Equipment from other company as far as sales is, we don't just sell an off the shelf item. We sell them a system. And what makes us strong is we, we design that system from the beginning to the end. We go in and we start that system up. So we're there through the whole process. We don't just sell something, turn around and walk away. We're there all the way through it. What makes Sentry different in, uh, is that we're there at the end. We make sure it's uh, started up and run into their satisfaction before we leave. So there's no question about the performance of the line. Sentry's approach to the construction of equipment is uh, it's very robust, uh, over-engineered. Um, we take a lot of time and pride in what we do. Uh, we have a, a great group of guys to, to look over the product. We like to do as much stuff in-house as possible, so 75% uh, of the equipment is made in-house. Uh, that way we can control the quality, the cost, 
and the turnaround time to get it out. Um, that's something that we have a lot of pride in and uh, our customers see that too. Century offers quite a few robotic solutions. It can be anywhere from a basic single robot, pick it in place, a single product onto a pallet, up to a multi-robot system with a lot of conveyor and material handling machinery to go with it. So we can do from one extreme to the other, whatever the customer's needs are. We have to consider a lot of factors when we start a new project, I'd say probably most importantly are the product that the customer is trying to run and how fast they need to run it. Uh, the characteristics of today's containers can vary so much that what works for one application may have no chance of working for another. So we have to keep that in mind as the equipment we build and design has to uh, evolve to keep up. Uh, we also consider the customer's facility and try to come up with a way to arrange equipment in a manner that uh, works well for them and allows them to work smarter, not harder. The big strength that Century has in our systems is we have experienced people in all different parts of a material handling system. Uh, from conveyor, conveying the product from point A to point B, machinery to handle the product, as well as the robotics. And we offer a complete solution which could include all these working together. Century is, it feels like a family. The, the customers know that, they see that uh, when we come out. We try to address every problem that they have and make sure they meet their product production numbers. We value our employees as much as possible. We always look out for them, uh, wanting to make sure that they have uh, the skills that they need, the schooling. We even, if they want to move around within the company and try different things, uh, we're open to that. A lot of other companies, you're a number. You know, you're not, a lot of people don't need by name. Uh, and that's one thing about Century is it, it's a family based. It's, it's a great place to work and it also transfers over into our product. Greg, it's evident that customer service is an important focus at Century. What role does it play in how Century operates and interacts with clients? First and foremost, uh, from the beginning of the project to the end of the project, we're concerned about taking care of the customer. Um, whether it be that we can offer a different solution that's a better solution for the customer in the beginning, even though it may cost a little more, Century is willing to make that change to, to satisfy the customer and make it a more efficient system. Um, at the end of the day, we're going to be there 24-7 to make sure that if any issues or problems arise, that we're there to answer the phone call or the email or um, drive parts overnight if necessary to take care of the customer. And Les, you have a philosophy. Quality standards change, but quality does not. So how does this phrase shape Century's approach to service? What a great slogan, right? Yeah. Quality standards it. change, um, especially relevant these days. Um, it's a competitive business. A lot of companies do some of the same things that we do. And competition leads to price. It leads to com uh, competition with price. And we've all got shareholders that we've got to please. So in some cases, other companies might let that translate into the customer receiving the bare minimum of what's deemed to be acceptable. You see it on the grocery store shelves all the time, smaller products, larger prices. Um, but at the end of the day, right is right and wrong is wrong. And we're just never gonna be the company that takes shortcuts that put our customers projects or for that matter, our own reputation in jeopardy. It's not in our DNA. Yeah, at the end of the day, we want to make sure that our customer feels like he's, he's been treated well. He knows that Century's there for him the next time. And that's where really what's built Century over the years has been the repeat business. Um, probably 83% of our jobs are repeat business, which is an amazing stat in today's world. So Greg, most customers come to you already knowing what they need, but Century can also make recommendations based on the customer's current operation procedures. Is that correct? Yeah, Kathy, a lot of the time the customers come to us with a, a new package that they want to introduce to the market. And they'll come to us with a certain machine that has to be integrated into the line. And through our outside sales team, working with our inside project management team, you know, we're, we develop a layout and we develop the proposal. And then once we've achieved the goal of whatever that package is being added to the system, then yeah, our electronics division gets involved on how the controls of that needs to work and then the manufacturing of it. And then once we have it built, we actually test it and run it in our facility before we ship it out to a customer. Um, and that saves time and money on our customer side of it. 
And Greg, much of your focus is on what you call the 11th hour commitment. How does that work? Our 11th hour commitment is, is we know there are going to be issues and there are going to be problems during an installation. And it's how you conduct business when that happens. Um, and our business is we rather fix the issue and worry about the money and who's responsible for what at a later date. Right now, let's get it fixed, get the equipment up and running so you're producing, you're making money. And once that's done, you know, then we can go back and discuss what issues are that happen in the meantime. At that moment, Greg's customer, his job is on the line. That's right. Right, so we can't waste time talking about those kind of things we get in and fix no. it. And, yeah. and at the end of the day, our whole role at everybody at Century is to take care of the customer. No matter what department you work take in. Take care of the customer. That's it. Yes. Uh, and, and that's our main goal, no matter where you're at in Century, I, I would say. It starts at the front door all the way through to the back. And our service department and electrical engineering do a wonderful job of taking care of our customers because they're the last ones that's in front of our customers. So the salesman is there, but he's not the, the last conversation that's had with that customer, it's that service team. And that's really what separates Century, I think, from everybody in this industry. Well, our president says our success is our people. That's right. Right. Greg, you've achieved so much in the last four decades. What should we look for next from Century? <laughs> Century is always r and trying to find, develop something new for this industry. The, the latest invention that we've had is the robotic palletizer, um, which is an automatic changeover machine, which requires no maintenance, uh, no operator interface. It does it 100% uh, electronically. And that's gonna be a, a huge thing in today's world because of finding employees that, that want to work in that industry. So we're being pushed every day to come up with something new and more innovative. Greg, it's clear customer service is so important to you and your team. Can you give an example of a satisfied customer? Hi, uh, Kathy, I can. Uh, about two years ago, we had a customer uh, in the central part of the United States that um, had purchased a, a system from us and we had designed it and built it, installed it, and it was running. But the customer never was completely satisfied with what we had provided. And the salesman called me and he says, hey, you know, maybe you can come up here and look at this. So we, I flew up, I took a look at it, and come back and Les and Tim and I sat down and reviewed it. And we all decided that that was not the proper application that we had provided. So we, as a team, decided that we were going to change it at our own cost. And because we had, you know, we did it and we installed it and the customer was much, much happier. Um, this past year, we were actually awarded a multi-million dollar project from this customer and in front of his board and um, other vendors. He actually said the reason for that was is because what we had done the year and a half earlier by correcting an issue that he knew was not our issue and, it, and we just went above and beyond to take care of that because we knew it was the right thing to do. Wow, congratulations on that. Thank you. Les, what's most meaningful to you about this work? Wow, you know, it's, uh, it challenges your intellect, it challenges your your body, I mean, it's a physical job. I mean, we've got a wide range of employees and tasks throughout the building. And, but it's, I was telling uh, one of the producers earlier that it's not seasonal. I mean, we, we are into food, we're into beverage. It, it doesn't get affected by the pandemic. Everybody's gonna go to the store and get a soda no matter what the economy's doing, right? And, and it's really simple in what we design. It's anything that you go to a grocery store and see, it's in a can, a bottle, or a box we can build a conveyor system for it. And, and it's necessary in today's world and in the future. I mean, that's gonna be here forever. You know, people gotta eat and people have to drink. So conveyance is gonna be here forever. It was a beautiful vision. Um, prior to the 60s, uh, you spoke of a one size fits all application. That's the way it was prior to the 60s. You buy it out of a catalog and you figure it out. That's right. Just like going to Lowe's and getting something and putting it together. 
And so the, the patriarchs of the conveyor, I call it the custom conveyor world, they had a vision of assembling experts that knew how to, this worked and to make custom systems that the end user could feel good about. And, and we, we feel like we have the best of every department in yeah, the oh country, yeah. no question. Right, yeah. It's a great team. Uh, what makes you most proud, Greg? The people, to be perfectly honest. Um, the relationships that you've built through the years, not only with the employees, but with the customers. Um, some customers have been with us, you know, since I got into it. Uh, you know, he's actually retiring Friday. <laughs> and actually, when uh, we leave from here, we're actually going to visit him. And um, I think he has affected all, all of our careers. Well, I think he gave our founder his first opportunity. I do. And so. he's, he's finally retiring, and um, it's been a great ride. It really has. Well, Greg and Les, congratulations to you, and thank you both so much for joining us today. It's our pleasure. And thank you very much for having us. Thank you. And thank you for watching. I'm Kathy Ireland.